I take a step back. How is this helpful? No one is winning. We're just standing and screaming. In fact, we've moved backwards. We've grown more devout, fanning the flames so you can't put them out. It's the 30th of March 2024 and the Palestine Solidarity Campaign have organised a march in London. The PSC announced the event on their Instagram page on March 12th, and a group named Our Fight UK subsequently called a counter-demonstration to it on, as far as I can see anyway, the day before, the 29th of March. These PSC marches, which have been going on regularly, have been the subject of considerable controversy, with right-leaning pundits and politicians labelling them hate marches and claiming that they create no-go zones for Jews, while others counter that they are marches for peace, are in condemnation of Israel, not of Jews, and are an exercise of vital democratic rights. What is the truth of it? Well, stay tuned and perhaps this video will give you some insight. I wasn't there with either demo, so this video is going to be a ride along, mostly based around a live stream called um, Jews and Christians Challenge, all caps, Islamists out in London. Here's our gracious host. I'm my ITC and we are once again in central London. Never give up, never surrender. Here's the route of the PSC march. And here's the location for the counter demo at the junction of the Strand and Waterloo Bridge Road. Some general notes. I think perhaps 70 to 80 people showed up to the counter demo, while the organisers of the PSC march estimated they had 200,000 attendees. The police provided the counter demo a designated area protected by Met Barrier, a substantial presence, and in my opinion in general took the right approach, facilitating both protests while keeping the two groups separated. There were some notable exceptions to this, which we will get onto. So let's get stuck into the stream. About 20 minutes into Tusi's live stream, this little bit of drama unfolds. Um, but it was, it was civilized. Oh, what's happening here? Okay, the police are... We have to, we have to follow them. We have to follow them, guys. I think they're moving the line. Oh, we got Palestinians on... Oh, we got Palestinians coming from behind, guys. We got the protesters from behind coming. Behind you, protesters. They're behind you! I think they basically found a way to go around it. That's why they were late, guys because some of them decided to ambush the counter-protesters. They're coming from that side. It's an ambush! They went around. They, they decided to come from behind. And now we have a new police line formed on this side, which is, this is behind the counter-protesters. So now... Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the police said they're going to send them around to go all the way. There's no bridge over there. They're going to have to go all the way. <laughs> they're still coming. Like, look on the other side. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. A couple came here and then they've been diverted this way around. Ah, right, so. right. Okay. They've been diverted. Okay, let's double check. Well, that's good. So I think they're going to be diverted now. Why did they decide to do this? I mean, I know why, but <laughs> what's wrong with them? <laughs> okay, so, well, they're coming up. Why are they coming up? Are they, are they coming from that side? They're, more of them are coming up now. Uh, that's a little bit weird. Okay. So they, they're now walking this way. Oh. Oh, no. okay. The police are now making a move. This is a little bit weird. So I think the police are going to tell them to go that way again. Oh no. <gasps> what? More banners and flags. Not more banners and flags! So, if you just joined us now in the live stream, we have a weird situation. The, the counter protesters are there. This is supposed to be the back of the actual thing, so no one was supposed to be here, but there some of the Palestinian protesters came from this side, so now they're being diverted. <laughs> the police are diverting them to, to go back on the main road. That would have been very ugly. That's why the police had to form a new line at the back of this protest. Here's what I think actually happened here without the paranoia and histrionics. 200,000 people were in town to attend the PSC march. Some of them were late, coming from the south, and sought to join the march via Waterloo Bridge Road. They likely had no idea there was a counter-protest planned on that street, a fact that was not widely known ahead of time, and probably weren't seeking out trouble. Upon being asked by the police to join the march via a different route, they agreed. 
That's all this actually was. By the time 2C returns to the rear of the counter protest, they appear to be giving a load of abuse to a random passing cyclist with no obvious pro-Palestine connection. With 2C also claiming, we got a Palestinian protest on this side, you shouldn't be on this side. Then this guy enters the frame, clearly agitated, shouting, there is support, there is and The stream drops for a short while, and when it returns, 2C and this guy have crossed the barrier towards some apparent but unseen presence of pro-Palestine protesters. And this exchange happens. What happened? They were coming from behind. Yeah, apparently there is a breakaway. They are in violation of section 12 on the march right now. And we want to see how the police is going to deal with it. Yeah, yeah they're breaking the conditions. All very dramatic. Keep this demand that the PSC side abide by segregation in mind. Around about this time, a random passerby offers this interjection. The first line and second line. Palestine. The guy is chanting free Palestine, champagne socialist. <laughs> what a dude. The head of the march arrives in view 38 minutes into Tusi's stream. Here we go guys, brace yourselves. We're now going to have the confrontation between the uh, Islamist protesters, the far left, and the British patriots, uh, Jews and Christians and the Persians have all come out to challenge the protesters. There we go. They're all here now. Another hate march in central London in 2024. I can already feel it now. Um, yeah, I can easily see the main crowd. Um, hopefully, the I mean, the police, there's a huge number now in, in this corner. Hopefully, it should be okay. But of course, you're going to get uh, the usual chants and hateful comments and everything else, um, because that's usually the whole point of this. A minute or so later, the march begins to pass the counter demo, and at that time, there are three lines of police separating the two groups. On the PSC side, a number of stewards can be seen forming a rough line and encouraging marchers to keep moving and not engage. <laughs> Now we're going to take a close look at a typical day out for the drama farmers. Here's what's going on here. Step 1. Engage as closely as possible with the pro-Palestine protesters presenting them with signs, symbols and chants that are likely to cause offence. In step 2, Zionist friendly photographers, reporters and right-leaning minor internet celebrities position themselves in the middle to record and report on any heated responses or aggression from the pro-Palestine march. Even better, record any arrests that happen, or make them happen in... Step 3. If the organic response of the opposition isn't quite doing it for you, you can try setting the police on them by reporting that you are finding certain signs distressing. Check this clip out. Even one member of the counter demo who Tusi asks what's going on seems to be uncomfortable with just how low of a blow this is. I think they're complaining about the sign. Hang on, let me just see. What, what are you saying? What was that? No, no, I don't have it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the one insisting the police go and remove it. Hey, I'm just watching. What does it say? A uh, Hitler moustache oh, on yes, a picture on, of... Yeah. On, 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 let on Jan Rishi, yeah. yeah. Later on, in a subsequent Tusi stream from the same event, one of the photographers admits to having reported a woman for a sign. They've stopped them from actually taking the, the arrest of people away. And they're not doing anything about it, the police. They're just standing there. Oh. You, know, you know the woman? Which one? Got arrested oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I reported that to a Sikh sergeant, and within about 30 seconds, yeah. boom! <laughs> they've, you've, got, you've got it on video, and been, I got barged out of the way! <laughs> the, police, the police have been on top of it today. They've been very good. They've like, been very, above very good. their situation, I'm not really sure yeah. what's going on, but... Uh, I don't know what's going on. I think that's most likely to have been this arrest, recorded and tweeted by at Rado Club and by Sabrina Miller. Before this woman was arrested, Miller also tweeted photos of both sides of her sign, which reads, Keep the world clean, on one side, with a graphic showing the Israeli flag being thrown in a bin, and abolish Zionism now, on the reverse. This woman, as with other arrestees, was taken away directly alongside the counter demo and received a load of verbal abuse from them as a result. <laughs> At 
least three other arrests also happened right there at the drama farm. This one, also tweeted by Miller at 133, I don't have any other information on. Then we have this guy for saying, I fully support Hamas, they resisted the occupation. As tweeted at 205 by Stuart Mitchell, whatever your view on Hamas may be, this arrest is legally 100% solid. What is said here is an unambiguous breach of section 12 of the Terrorism Act of 2000. Hamas are, currently, a prescribed terrorist organisation in the UK, and voicing support for them is a crime here. I hope this man was aware of what he's gotten himself into and has some kind of a plan, such as intending to become a political prisoner, or making a stand on this as a point of principle? We will see. And lastly, there was this arrest, also recorded and then tweeted by Mitchell at 449, in which a man in a slightly bizarre outfit loses his temper completely and starts shouting things like... And at the counter demo. He's clearly agitated and out of order, and in my opinion, there are adequate grounds for arrest here. That said, if I'm matching up the arrests with those reported by The Guardian correctly, then this man may be being investigated for a racially aggravated public order offence, and I've seen nothing that would support the racially aggravated part of that. So that's the full-on arrests out of the way. The other major pastime on the drama farm was posting clips and photos of the bad bits and variously complaining about them, presenting them to the world as if representative of the PSC march more generally, and in some cases, tagging in the police and demanding action. Sabrina Miller was particularly active in this mode. At 1.30pm, she posted this photo of these two guys standing in front of all the police lines with a Hamas is terrorist sign with the tweet, This is really tense. At 1 hour 9 minutes into Tusi's livestream, she can be seen looking happy and relaxed inside the PSC march from more or less where that photo was taken from. She tweeted photos of these two signs, which both compare the current situation in Gaza to the Holocaust, with the implication that doing so is unacceptable. Her post to the right also has a whiff of deconstructing this woman's Jewish identity for having the wrong opinions. Then, at 2.14pm, Miller tweeted this picture of a small group of Jews from the Nutrai Carter group with the caption, And look which extremist fringe group decided to show up. This tweet received a huge pile of abuse from her online following, with responses such as It's always the same two weird creatures and their mini versions. Yeah, the same five inbred representatives at every single rally. Seriously? Are they in fancy dress? Don't they know Purim was last week? These fake Jews are absolutely not helpful in bringing peace in the Middle East. Oh my god, these inbred lunatics again. I hate them so much. Oh pally idiots, show their true faces with this. Clown emojis. Using fake religious costumes. Purim is over, you idiots. First of all, fix your teeth and then maybe some sense will develop. These are capo scum Jews. Send them to Gaza where they belong. Yet more child abuse. Capos! Cosplayers enter stage far left. What is it with the bad dental care? Cowards trying to save their own necks by selling their people in Israel down the river to the sea. Lol. These are paid actors. Liars, liars, liars. Puppets. The inbreds. Child abuse! The worst thing is them involving their kids in it. On Shabos they did not. They're cosplay Jews. It would be nice to drop them off in Gaza with the food aid. Lovely stuff. In case you didn't already know, capo is a term used to describe Jews who collaborated with the Nazis in the concentration camps in return for certain privileges. Miller is, of course, not responsible for these tweets, but I do wonder if this flavour of Holocaust relativism and anti-Semitism will be dealt with or just hand-waved away as inconvenient. To be fair to her, Miller was the only drama farmer honest enough to post a picture of one of the signs calling for the release of the Israeli hostages. There were other such signs, not many, but they were there, and nobody else among this counter demo made any mention of them that I can see. So I said, please tell us how many thousands of people stopped paying their TV license since the 7th of October. We want to know. As the crowd passed by, in an overwhelmingly good-natured fashion, Tusi would grumble that... Uh, it's getting a little bit intimidating, but uh, it's okay, but uh, I'm, I'm now back in the police, uh, inside the police area. Or... It no longer feels safe to be here, but uh, luckily we're with the police. Oh. More aggression. They're getting more aggressive again. For no obvious reason. At one point, he describes the situation as a standoff, when all that's really going on is the street is log jammed from the heavy footfall. So there's going to be a standoff because the, the crowd are not moving anymore, and the police are trying to stop them from crashing into the police line. That tall guy is obviously being aggressive. The Zionist counter demo chanted things like. Go, 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 go. 
PSC marchers chanted or shouted back. <laughs> and generally speaking, that's how it went. If you want to see the whole thing, the link will be in the description, of course. At one point, Tusi sees a red flag in the march and says, We've got the workers. Communist Party of Iran. So these are the Iranian communists who are on the side of the Palestinian side. They are not the pro-freedom Iranians. The red flag you can see is the Communist Party of Iran, which, which they go hand in hand with the Islamists of Iran. This is the red flag. Well, he got one thing right about this. This is a flag relating to Iranian communists. More specifically, this flag pertains to the Hekmatist faction within the Iranian communist movement, i.e. those who view the Worker Communist Party of Iran founder Mansour Hekmat as their leader. In a publication marking International Women's Day 2023, the Hekmatist party wrote the following regarding the current government of Iran. A revolution that topples the Islamic Republic with the power from below and with the distinct role of women and its maximalist demands will provide a clear horizon for freedom and well-being of the humanity to the world. Maybe that was just some lightweight virtue signalling. Are they really not the pro-freedom Iranians and hand in hand with the Islamists of Iran? Well, if they are, it would be hard to explain the following. In 2009, a court in Iran was able to convince Interpol to uphold arrest warrants against 12 exiled Hekmatist Iranian communist political activists. In an excoriating open letter in reply, the Hekmatists demanded that Interpol remove the names from their wanted list and said, The Islamic Republic of Iran has been extremely notorious when it comes to participating in criminal acts, organized crime, assassination of opposition members, and the gross violation of human rights of people in Iran. This regime does not have any legitimacy whatsoever to issue arrest warrants against political activists. There are daily protests in Iran against this regime, and the people of Iran are clearly expressing their disapproval of this regime and are risking their lives on a daily basis to put an end to the brutal oppression of their rights and freedoms. Should we go one more? Okay, in 1999, Mansour Hekmat himself gave an interview to a publication called Nigar. It was translated and published by the Workers' Communist Party of Iran in 2004. I apologise, but I'm choosing to censor the title image slightly because I can't be doing with this video being taken down over some nipples, but the WCPI did not see any need to do so on their website. Anyway, here is Hekmat giving his view. In Islam, be it true or untrue, the individual has no rights or dignity. In Islam, the woman is a slave. In Islam, the child is on par with animals. In Islam, free thinking is a sin deserving of punishment. Music is corrupt. Sex without permission and religious certification is the greatest of sins. This is the religion of death. In reality, all religions are such, but most religions have been restrained by free thinking and freedom loving humanity over hundreds of years. This one was never restrained or controlled. With every move, it brings abominations and misery. Well, yeah, looks like another pesky Islamist to me. I do slightly wonder if Tusi is just an idiot blowing whatever random words out of his mouth happen to fit the narrative he has already decided to tell. It could go a little bit deeper than that though. Either he had no knowledge at all about communism in Iran but was happy to mouth off about it anyway, or he does know what this flag represents, but an authentically Iranian challenge to Islamism that comes from a political court he otherwise detests is threatening enough that he feels the need to hide it. Maya, if it's the former, and if you see this guy again, you should apologise for slandering him and, frankly, give him your silly stab vest because if this movement is as full of terrifying Islamists as you insist it is, he's put himself at far greater risk than you for flying that very flag. As well as the presence of at least one Iranian Hekmatist communist, these two men with handmade Bolshevik tendency placards appeared walking past in Tusi's livestream. Bolshevik tendency are, of course, another communist group, and they published their magazine, Bolshevik No. 6, earlier this year, which led with an article on the Israel-Palestine issue from which the following quote is drawn. It is hardly surprising that most Palestinians view the 7th of October breakout as a legitimate act of resistance. 
but it is also clear that many harbour serious reservations about Hamas. While Marxists side with Hamas in military confrontations with Israeli occupation forces, it is a tragedy that the resistance of the Palestinians, generally regarded as among the best educated, most secular and politically sophisticated in the Muslim world, is being led by a theocratic, homophobic and misogynist Islamic movement. Islamic obscurantism no more represents a historically progressive alternative for the brutally oppressed Palestinians than the pathological racism of Netanyahu's regime does for Israeli Jews. Okay, essay over. Thanks for coming to my TED talk, Communists Aren't Islamists. Hope that helps. So I guess it's time to talk about this guy. This is Itai Galmudi. According to a post on the Jewish Telegraph Facebook page, from which I have redacted the name and location of the pub he runs, Galmudi is 41, was born in Israel, and first moved to the UK in 2004. He then moved back to Israel around 2008 to get married, obtain a law degree, and um, serve in the IDF as a reservist during Operation Protective Edge. This post from 2013 suggests he may have been in a tank unit. The 2014 conflict claimed the lives of 2,185 Palestinians in Gaza and 69 Israelis. Both sides were accused of war crimes, with Israel accused of indiscriminate bombardment, among other things. According to sources gathered by B'Tselem, Salem, Israel fired approximately 14,500 tank shells and 35,000 artillery shells at targets in Gaza during this time. Overall Israeli casualties were 9% civilian, whereas Palestinian casualties were 63% civilian. Of those Palestinian deaths where shelling is known to be the cause of death, the collateral damage rate jumps up to 86% civilian. If it's hard for you to connect with a bunch of numbers, here's some relevant names and faces. While waiting for a vehicle to flee from a heavy ongoing Israeli bombardment, these eight members of the Al-Khalili family were hit with two tank shells in the garden of their home in the east of Gaza City. Seven of them died on the spot, not including the unborn child Aya was pregnant with, while Mahmoud, seven years old, survived the initial shelling but was badly burnt in the ensuing fire and died four days later. Here is the aftermath of that tank shelling. These images and video are courtesy of obliteratedfamilies.com. To be completely clear, I am not saying I can put Galmudi's finger on the trigger regarding these, or in fact any deaths during the 2014 war, but he was an active participant in that particularly bloody and severely one-sided conflict in some capacity. This then is somebody who we've now got on the streets of London shouting there is support, there is at people for showing their support to the Palestinian cause. A former IDF soldier who took an active role in a conflict that killed more than 500 children, 283 of them being under the age of 10, and whose specific duties may have been disproportionately likely to have resulted in him committing war crimes. One Israeli child also died during the 2014 war, Daniel Tragerman, a four-year-old who was killed by a mortar fired into Kibbutz Nahal Oz. May they all rest in peace. One last point on this guy. As well as his dubious, potentially appalling military history, Galmudi apparently was involved in an altercation at the London pub he runs, after asking patrons to remove what is described as provocative Palestinian garb. I can't find the footage of this, but would be curious to see it if anyone can drop a link in the comments. I'm on the fence about the reasonableness of this in principle. There is precedent in cases such as publicans having the right to refuse service to anyone, say, in a football shirt on a match day, but if you are unambiguously with Galmudi on this one, you must also agree in principle with a publican having the right to refuse service to anyone bearing a flag of Zion, for example. Please ask yourself, is that okay by you? Anyway, let's get back to the demo. All this, even Al Jazeera, when you see them and you ask that question, they run away. Why? Because it's the truth. The Palestinian people looked at their life and they were asked by George Bush to pick a leader that will help their future and they picked Hamas. Hamas is an elected government. Now it's time for the great saga of these two chaps. In the 47th minute of Tusi's livestream, this lady lets him know... He acts there with his original son. I don't know if you saw him to film it. And indeed he is. On the PSC side of the police line, no less, holding his trademark Hamas is terrorist sign and accompanied by another man. They are both still there at the 1 hour 15 minute mark. And, in fact, they are both still there in a second live stream that Tusi followed this one with, with the entire march having passed by. These two are Niak Gorbani and Mark Burbeck. 
Gulbani is a British-Iranian activist who has been repeating the same signature move of turning up at Palestine solidarity events with a sign that says Hamas is terrorist since at least the 4th of November 2023. There is always a second person, often at Rado Club, on hand to await, film and publish any hostile response he receives. Burbeck is one of the founders of Our Fight UK and an occasional columnist for Spiked magazine. I'm disappointed that the police allowed these two to remain where they were for all this time, especially given that Burbeck actually organised this protest only to then go and place himself outside of the area designated for it. That's meant to be naughty, right? Yeah, apparently there is a breakaway. They are in violation of section 12. Yeah, they're breaking the conditions. I don't know why they're standing here. They're not supposed to. This is supposed to be the back of the actual thing, so no one was supposed to be here. We've got a Palestinian protest on this side, he shouldn't be on this side. Burbeck and Gorbani had already been stopped by the cops just 100 metres or so up the road outside the Luciano restaurant. Gorbani even tweeted about this, claiming that he and Burbeck had specifically approached Jeremy Corbyn at the head of the march to, um, show him their nice signs before being removed by the police. This isn't the first time Gorbani has targeted Corbyn. In a video post from the 28th of October 2023, Gorbani got close enough to Corbyn to put a hand on him in order to accuse him of supporting the government of Iran and recorded the encounter. Mr. Corbyn, shame on you for supporting the Iranian government. For his part, Corbyn just looked entirely baffled. While I think the police were soft on these two on the day by failing to insist they went in the designated area, they do at least now seem to have got the measure of Gorbani. He was arrested a week later for failure to comply with police instructions while insisting he was a journalist and refusing to get out of the path of the Al Quds Day march. Of course, this arrest too was live streamed by Gorbani himself, covered by Maya Tusi, tweeted by Rado Club, and then retweeted by Tommy Robinson. Blah, blah, blah. You get the picture. Drama farmers. Coming back to the 30th of March. In among his stream of consciousness style grumblings about how awful the PSC march is, Tusi can't seem to help himself from making a certain type of remark about some of the women present. Here's a selection. Here's uh, what I call those two girls plastic socialists. Their whole face is plastic now. I don't think uh, Islamists will be too happy. <laughs> That woman is dancing. She seems very concerned about uh, civilians. She's dancing around. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a purple her. Who had this? Who had this on their bingo card? Of course, purple her, pink her, because she will be very much welcome in the Palestinian territory with that her. Yeah. I'm sure they will very much appreciate her appearance and her fashion sense in Gaza. Yeah, they love pink, don't they? Absolutely unhinged, ladies and gentlemen. They're all unhinged. Altogether, this seems to be just some classic uh, women are always wrong style misogyny, as expressed through his forced culture war framing. If the women on this protest had all turned up in burqas, heads held low and solemn, he'd accuse them of fealty to Islamism and therefore they'd be wrong. If they turn up with their hair out, or shock horror, even with their hair out dyed pink, dancing and joyful, then, as in these examples, he'll accuse them of hypocrisy for going against the same Islamic values he claims ought to be opposed, or he'll say that their visible smiles and happiness are contrary to what he thinks is the proper mood and thus invalidates their protest. Whether it has a misogynistic subtext or not, unprincipled hypocritical whinging is rife among this lot. We've already seen the demand that the other side stay in the right place versus the failure to do so themselves and then the fits of pique when called out on it. So the police are trying to contain that situation because they've got a couple of Palestinian supporters. I don't know why they're standing here. They're not supposed to. They're telling them to move. Because my girl bunny is still being protected by the police. These people will rage at the police for failing to immediately make arrests for alleged signs bearing swastikas, or those showing depictions of Netanyahu with horns. I saw a number of signs that were blatantly anti Semitic, like with swastikas, people depicted with horns. But seemingly have no problem at all with Mike Burbeck posting a swastika online a week before this, or Niek Gorbani posting this image of Hamas leader Yaha Sinwar depicted as a rat down a tunnel. 
Miller and Rado Club were performatively horrified at the Keep the World Clean sign, while Tusi is happy to use language like this to describe his political opponents. The smell coming from that side of the protest is a little bit interesting. A lot of BO. So, this corner, the police have managed to almost clean up <clears throat> after the mess that we just had over the last few minutes. The rest of the crowd have been arrested, uh, who were here. That's why it's a bit clean now. So these are the bad Iranians. Avoid their smell. They don't shower. The comments on his streams are also absolutely rank with open calls to genocide and demands for ethnic cleansing in the UK. Sometimes they are both anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim in equal measure, but you won't hear Tusi say a bad word about any of these remarks. I find the single greatest irony to be that Tusi is going hammer and tongs to push this idea that he and his buddies are fighting an anti-Islam and thus anti-authoritarian culture war, yet they are the ones relentlessly appealing to the authorities, calling for censorship and demanding the greater and more oppressive use of police powers to prevent the expression of political views that they dislike. Tusi, you can pose next to a Union Jack all day if you want. It really doesn't matter because your anti-free speech actions are profoundly anti-British. That's about it for interesting bits. The last thing worth mentioning is that in the second stream, Tusi comes across a situation just up the road where the police have detained one or two people, at least one of them being a very fresh-faced minor. I don't know what they were detained for, but other members of the march reacted by carrying out a spontaneous non-violent corral over the police van, preventing them from leaving with the suspects. They also did this ridiculously wholesome thing of shouting some actually quite good legal advice at the detained. Obviously there's a massive uh, trans flag on the ground, on the floor, supporting the Palestinian cause from the gender lobby. Let me show you. There we go, that's the one. Tusi was, of course, incandescent about this, saying it was bad that more force was not used to get the protesters out of the way, and chuckling at comments in his live chat about steamrollers. Did someone say steamroller <laughs> in the live chat? <laughs> get the army. The whole thing is ridiculous. It's so embarrassing. I'm not really sure why the police are still being tolerant. <clears throat> That's the van. The protesters are not allowing the police to move. I'm not really sure why the police are not just moving. They can just uh, grab these guys and pick them up. But they've decided to block the, the van. <clears throat> Imagine if this was happening in any other country, even democratic countries like France or Germany, let alone China or Russia or anywhere really. Or how about in like Iran? I think some of these protests will be uh, under the van by now. Tusi gets bored and leaves the scene before it concludes, but we found out elsewhere later on that this action was effective and the detained people were released. A slightly personal note here, it's no secret that me and London-based trans activists aren't exactly on the best of terms, but clearly a handful of you lot were involved in this one and I've got to give credit where it's due. Nice one, fair play. Here's my thoughts on how the Palestine Solidarity Movement should deal with this going forward. First off, don't engage with the drama farmers. The PSC and affiliated stewards had exactly the right idea in telling the crowd to just leave it and carry on. These people are literally out to offend you, provoke a reaction, and use that reaction to tarnish the movement. You will not change their minds through force of argument, so there is really nothing on the table to win here. Hold your heads high, walk on by, and talk to normal people. Alternatively, uh, if you had no principles whatsoever, and were simply looking to play the game as effectively as possible, you'd send a few people down here to engage with the police. 
explained to them in all seriousness that given the unfolding horrors in Gaza, the sight of the flag of Zion and or any of the rest of this pro-Israel messaging causes you to feel threatened, alarmed and distressed. Say that you'd like something done about it. In particular, you'd like them to enact Section 5 of the Public Order Act of 1986. You'd get that exchange on video. And then, if nothing is done about it, you'd post that exchange online with the hashtag 2 tier policing. This, of course, is only what you should do if you had no principles whatsoever. I'll leave this with others to decide upon. As evidenced here, this lot have already very much deployed this particular strategy, so if that was what you were waiting for... Here's what I'd ask of the police. While I am adamant that this group's right to assembly and peaceful protest should be protected, I think it could be policed differently. On Armistice Day, absolute cordons made largely out of police vans were used to prevent far-right football hooligans from coming into contact with the PSC march. Given their various shenanigans as pointed out in this video, and given Tusi's open characterization of events as being a planned confrontation, we're now going to have the confrontation between the uh, Islamist protesters, the far left, and the British patriots. Uh. I think that may be a proportionate way of dealing with things. An absolute cordon between the two groups would also prevent these various clearly partisan media or citizen journalist types from going back and forth between the sides for dubious reasons. On a similar note, arrangements should ideally be made that any arrests at either side of the cordon are conducted on that side, rather than being paraded past the opposition in either direction for them to whoop and cheer at. And finally, here's something really powerful to carry with you going forward. The people of Britain stand with Palestine. No, I'm not joking. In a YouGov poll carried out a few days before this march, and notably before the appalling WCK strike that killed three Britons, 2,108 people were asked if arms exports to Israel should stop and if Israel was committing human rights violations in Gaza. 56% versus 17% agreed the arms sales should stop. 59% versus 12% agreed Israel was committing human rights violations. Only among people intending to vote Tory at the next general election was it even close on the arms question, which was tilted slightly in favour of stopping exports and even they still came back with a solid plurality that Israel was committing human rights violations. This little group can cover themselves in Union Jacks and sing the national anthem all day long if they want. Public opinion is simply not with them at this point. It's not even close. And as a result, there is nothing to win from the kind of street-level engagement that they are seeking. That's all from me. Thank you for listening, and I'll leave you with some fashion tips from none other than... This was my outfit today at the protest that you guys saw. Um, I mean, the situation is not looking good. Don't worry, I've come with my protective vest and security. It's, it's not comfortable. This this vest is not comfortable for my own safety. Oh, <laughs> security, I've got my protective vest. I need to get up. I'm too. Also, I'm, I'm wearing my protective vest, but uh, it's not easy to move in it. I'm currently, you can see. I'm, I'm sitting down. Also, this protective vest, this sad vest, is very, very uncomfortable. It's, it's getting worse and worse now, by the minute. And I've got my own security, got my uh, um, sort of stab vest. I wish I didn't have to wear it, but unfortunately, I've been told I have to. Children Just a quick home. update for you guys. Bring our children home. My protective vest. Why have you got a stab vest on today? For no other reason other than a greater false sense of importance of which I can never retain on my own. <laughs> right. Unfortunately guys, my battery is dying.